Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to talk about bioremediation. So let's get started. So previously, we have talked about biosurfactants and its properties. So today, we are going to move from this point and we are going to touch the next topic, which is pesticides bioremediation. So talking about these pesticides bioremediation, there are a lot of factors on which uh, these pesticide uh, bioremediation depends upon. So let's go through them. So talking about these pesticides uh, remediation, so let's just talk about what is pesticides in general. So these are chemical which can be organic or inorganic substances which is used in order to control any limiting factor thereby facilitating, facilitating better growth of particular crop. It involves insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, rodenticides, malicicides, anima animaticides, plant growth regulators and others. So these help all of these insects, fungi and all of these uh, in plant inhibiting uh, insects or any other organisms to get killed with the help of pesticides. So there are some types of pesticides as you can see. So one of them is chemical pesticides and other is a bio pesticide. So under chemical pesticides, we have organochlorine, organophosphates, carbamates and pyrethroid. And under bio pesticides, we have microorganisms and plant incorporated protectants or PIP. So moving on with that. So as you can see, these are some of the common pesticide DDT, carbamates, hexachlorocyclohexane or HCH. So these are some of the common structures of dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane so these are some of the important or common pesticides that are used so some of uh, the adverse effects on the environment and on us are so these may be carcinogen uh, carcinogenic or neurotoxic these are persistent xenobiotics or recalcitrant to biodegradation so these are very uh, dangerous we have already talked about xenobiotics in my previous videos and all of the recalcitrant uh, xenobiotics and other contaminants also bioaccumulate or show biomagnification so biomagnification we have done that it's nothing but accumulation of pollutants and it has adverse environmental effects and it shows development of pest resistance so slowly as these pesticides are extensively used in these fields so these pests these insects and these all other substances which inhibit the plant growth pick up slowly and steadily resistant to these pesticides so which is not at all good all right so moving on with this so talk about the enzymatic biodegradation reactions so talk uh, so these can be of two types in general which is aerobic and anaerobic these include oxidation reduction degradation and hydrolysis and conjugation detoxification mineralization activation and dehalogenation so some of these uh, so there are lots of processes that uh, this biodegradation process or this bioremediation of pesticides includes and mainly all of the chemical processes with these undergo while degradation so some of the D uh, so some of the common pesticides such as ddt gets uh, dehydro with the help of the enzyme dehydrochlorinase gets degraded to dde which is dichlorodiphenyl dichloroethylene all right Another pesticide which is linden, uh, so with the help of uh, a reaction which is dehalogenation, it gets converted to 2,3-pentachloro-1-cyclohexane. So these are some of the important enzymes and reactions. So with the help of these enzymes, uh, these reactions are carried out and thus are named as dehydrogenation and some of these enzymes such as these. Also some of the pesticides degrading microbes use them for their growth. So some of the pesticides degrading microbes are flavobacterium, pseudomonas, rhodococcus, arthobacter. So these degrade the pesticides into small, into useful stuff and these degrade for their own growth. So moving on with this. So talking about the pesticide bioremediation or basically pesticide degradation into useful stuff. So which is through three steps, which is biotransformation, so biotransformation is nothing but enzymes present in different bacteria and fungi can transform it into less or not toxic compounds. All right. So basic biotransformation is very simple as the word suggests. So it's just the conversion into a non-toxic compound. 
So the next process that we have here is the phytoaccumulation or phytoextraction, which includes pesticides accumulation in some plants. All right. So this is the pesticide accumulation in some plants, and then we have bio leaching, which is pesticides solubilized and removed via leaching. So talking about these about in detail. So talking about some of the aspects such as bio pros prospecting. So it is also known as a biodiversity prospecting. And it's it is the exploration and investigation for the commercial usage of biological material with val uh, with valuable genetic and biological properties. Some of the examples here are extremophilic organisms or uh, which survive in extreme environments and possess unique characteristics and adaptation that enable its survivability. So their enzymes could be potentially a great source for scientific advancement and chemical commercial application. So this is another thing. So these are some of the investigations that are carried out for the usage of biological material. So this is some sort of a bio prospecting, and some of the examples that we have in under bio prospecting is uh, thermal aquaticus, which is used in PCR. So most of you will be familiar with this. Uh, and then we have Antarctic ice fish, which has a uh, antifreeze proteins, which contains antifreeze proteins. We have microalgae, which has carotenoids, essential fatty acids. We have crustacea, which has uh, cytosine, glucosamine. We have actinomycetes, which contains or has several types of antibiotics and antifouling agents. So these are some of the biological materials uh, which help in the betterment of a particular process and in themselves as too. So moving on with so by bio pros uh, prospecting is needed. So why this thing is needed? All right. So it is basically to find new resources and product from the nature, and it improves human health because it does not include any sort of pesticides or any other harmful agents, and through improved medicines and drug as uh, uh, which were developed from natural products. And in crop plant biotechnology, naturally useful trait such as disease and drought resistance can be screened out and studied. So definitely it can be used for further studies also and it's good for human health. So where is this process done? So it's basically done in hotspots where biodiversity is at its richest, it's mainly in forests and some other ecosystem which are highly of uh, uh, very important and which contains a lot of uh, trees and plants and important ecosystem. So this are also include uh, extremophiles, which has thermophiles, have halophiles, alkali files within unique ecological niches, and it is also done in microbial secondary metabolites. So it is also carried out in microbial secondary metabolites while uh, bacterium grows. So the secondary metabolites are mainly produced in the stationary phase, where it leads to the mainly production of antibiotics and other stuffs. All right, so moving on with this. So talking about some of the processes of bio processing. So the, some of the phases are, we see four phases here. So the first phase is the on-site sample collection. And the next is the basic research, isolation, uh, catheterization and culture of specific compounds. And then we have screening of potential use such as pharmaceutical or other uses. And then it's the product development and commercialization, including patenting trials in marketing so these are this is this is the basic four step uh, involved for any of the product development right so basically it's the first of all is the sample collection then we need to study about the thing and then we need to isolate and culture the specific compound then we need to screen and check it check for its potential uses which can be in the pharmaceutical or other uses and then we go for the last stage which is the product development all right so some of the key issues and challenges in this uh, process is the conservation of natural resources or uh, uh, recourses versus exploitation and legal clarity in the product development and bio piracy. So this is a, this is a normal uh, issue that happens every now and then while a product is delivered in the market. All right. So let's just keep this video till here. I'll be back with another video very soon. So stay tuned and thank